All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel again. Leicester City career mode, episode 30. Starting the episode off with a couple one cup game against Spurs. These fucking Spurs. Um, this is the side we went up with. I was going to go with a full strength squad, but in the end, I thought we've got a Champions League game coming up soon. We've got some Premier League games. I'll rotate it a little bit. The Spurs squad was relatively strong. Could have been stronger. Players like Pritchard in the team. Um, but we made changes of our own. We've beat Spurs a few times in the past, and I was hoping to get another result kind of like this. But this game was kind of quiet. 27 minutes in before we get our first chance. It's Hope we playing it into Ayose Perez, who gets his name on the team sheet. And he more or less just put it into the keeper's hands. Tottenham get a free kick this time, and I was completely asleep for this one. I was just waiting for them to cross the ball into the box. And when they laid it off there, I was not ready. I was just, I was all over the place. 80 minutes in now, you see time jumping because there was not really much going on in this game. Kramerich coming inside onto his right foot, forcing a good save out of Michel Vaughan. Still nil-nil at this point, as you can see. Good save in the end. I probably should have went far post, but sometimes I like to just smash it near post. You've seen it work for me in the past. I think it was Sanchez who I actually done it with, or maybe it was Osley Chamberlain cutting in just like that and then going near post, kind of trying to keep catch the keeper off guard. Didn't work that time, but you see the match has actually gone into extra time. A lot of shots in this match just going into the keeper's hands. Tottenham the victims this time. And then the ball is, I don't even know what, like, I don't know how to describe that. I was going to say crossed into the box, but it really wasn't crossed into the box. But you see in the end, it's Toby Alderweireld actually just heading into an open net after Ben Hamer had to rush and scramble to get it off the line. You'll see from the replay, it was actually Gokken Inla who kind of, he basically crossed it into his own box. Uh, the ball's loose. You can clearly see the ball is loose. Inla is nowhere near the favourite for that. And I pressed to slide tackle to get the ball. And he's crossed it into his own box. I have no idea why he didn't just clear um, slide tackle. I really don't understand why he didn't slide tackle there. But the balls eventually fell to Olderville. And he's headed into an open net. We've lost the game. We're out of the Capital One Cup. Uh, yeah, that's how it ended. Michel Vaughan got man of the match because he just was... Kind of un unbeatable in that match. Just getting onto everything. Even even little crosses. Just stopping everything that I tried. And you see there. Just a terrible shot from Arsian. Just a little daisy cutter right there. Keeper scrambled that out. Aaron's putting the back in there. But he was actually offside. It's come back to Arsian. That's a much better shot. 22 minutes in. Forcing a good save out of Jack Butland. 31 minutes in. We get a corner. Mares whips it in. Mancian gets his head on it. And it actually hit the post before McLean is able to clear it so we're on top of this game 33 minutes in Mares, a little bit of dribbling trying to go outside coming back inside and his shot is deflected just wide goes out for another corner into the second half this time West Brom still yet to have a chance in this game but now they're about to manufacture one Morrison plays it into Rondon into Gardner back into Morrison back to Rondon about five yards out and the keeper makes an outstanding save Mares. Put some more pressure on by giving it away there. And look at that for a shot from Morrison. Off the post. Like, oh God. The way he's hit that is just a beautiful shot. A bit ridiculous with the, the way his body swivels. But it's regardless, it's a great strike off the post. Bit unlucky there. We are denied by Jack Butler. And that's the chance for like the final chance of this game. For the second game in a row, the opposition goalkeeper gets the man of the match award. And another 0-0 draw in this game in a row. We'll see we're training again Nunez. We've showed you him a few times. I'll probably in the next episode I'll show you him how he's looking now in terms of potential. Maybe I'll show you the whole team. But he my my I'm so excited about seeing how he turns out. The only thing that could go wrong for him maybe is weak weak foot, which really I'm not too interested. If his weak foot is bad, I'll just turn him into a right back most likely. Because he is a right footed left back. So I'm kinda assuming his left foot is gonna be relatively good because he's a left back. If it's not good, I'll, I'll just play him right back. And you see here, we're into the AC, um, Champions League game with AC Milan. I showed you the table. If we was to win this game, we would pretty much secure qualification into the knockout stages with either first or second place. Obviously, Barcelona are top of the group at the moment with six out of a possible nine points if they've played all three games, which they most likely have. But going into the game, Early chance for AC Milan, taken 
by Carlos Baca. Smashed it in from about 25 yards out, just out of nowhere. We had to make a quick reply. Mares slid it into Valencia. Keepers come out, not made any real attempt to get the ball. Valencia's just taken a touch around him and slotted it into an empty net. Celebrates with Lewis Holtby on the sideline. And Enna Valencia scores his first Champions League goal for Leicester City. King Car Stadium is bouncing. We've beat AC Milan previously in our first Champions League game in Champions League proper. This time it's a good run from Enna Valencia, just sliding off the back of the defender. And again, the keeper should have done better. He's just allowed Valencia to touch it around. Obviously, Valencia's got there first, but you'd expect the keeper to maybe smother the ball, do something. I don't know, but we pulled it back to 1-0. One 1-0 all. One all at this point, 18 minutes in. Schlupp, some good football. He finds himself down the left-hand side. He's got Valencia in the middle, and it's a great challenge in the end to deny Valencia from a simple tap-in to the back of the net. 30 minutes in now, we're on top again. El Mohamedi with a good delivery and Valencia getting his head on the ball. We've had a few good chances with Valencia since he signed from heading positions. With, he's got good heading stats and the power header trait, so I'd expect better from the chances that he did get. And look at that one. That's a good header from Carlos Baca. A real good all-round striker. I would look into signing him probably if he wasn't so old, but he's towards the end of his career. But that's a brilliant save from Kasper Schmeichel again. His rating just doesn't do him any justice because he is brilliant. But we're on the attack now. A little one-two with Vardy and Arsian. Vardy does the same thing that Valencia has done. He's just taken the touch to go past the keeper. He's finished it from a much tighter angle though. That's a brilliant finish. Look, Inla into Vardy. Drops it back off to Arsian. Arsian threads it through into Vardy. He takes a touch around the keeper. And from a tight angle. Lopez done a bit better there. He tried to actually get onto the shot there. But the finish from Vardy, I guess you've got to give him credit from that tight angle. Swiveling his body as well, rotating his hips to get into it. It was a tough one. He made it work. Mares into Vardy again. Can he make it free? He just drags his shot wide a little bit. He should have finished that one. If he could finish the other one, he should be able to finish. And Ena Valencia here on the ball, going outside, forcing the save out of Diego Lopez there. 75 minutes in, got a player down, but Mares plays on. Threads a great ball into Jamie Vardy. One on one with a keeper, pulls away. Tucks it into the back of the net, bottom corner. 75 minutes in, we've made it a two-goal gap. And Jamie Vardy there scores yet again. He just keeps scoring. He is, he's a beast in this game. He's such a beast. Mara's there. You see timing the ball, through ball to perfection. If you're going to play such a high line against Jamie Vardy, you might just be punished, especially if he's onside. You're not going to catch up to him. And when he's on the form that he's on, He's going to finish it. He's going to hit the back of the net. Jamie Vardy gets his second of the game. Leicester City's third of the game. Celebrates in front of the camera. And Jamie Vardy has his fifth goal in the Champions League competition as it shows up here. Jamie Vardy, five goals in this competition. It's, he's just... Ah, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about Jamie Vardy. But into the final game of this episode against Bournemouth. We expect to win here. We've had a one Premier League game previously, the two previous Premier League games against, not Premier League, the two previous games against Premier League opposition have both ended in 0-0 draws. We don't want another 0-0 draw. We want to get on the score sheet. I don't know what it's been in this episode with the 0-0 draws. I just struggled to score. I don't know what it was. I just found it hard to score. But we get a chance early on. Inla out wide, whips in a beautiful ball into Holtby. And he... Still looking for his first Leicester City goal after that chance. He probably should have put it into the back of the net. But you see here, nothing much changed in this game. 55th minute we've jumped to without a real chance to show. Danny Drinkwater in the 55th minute just putting his chance wide. And then we jump to the 82nd minute with Bournemouth holding the ball in the corner. And I've spoke about this before, but look at Mares. I'm holding the R1 teammate help button and he's just standing there watching. And then when he does do something, he just runs it off the pitch. And that was the end of the game. There was really nothing to show in this match from this game. Like, there was nothing. Fabian Shaw yeah. comes out with a man of the match performance. I guess he was solid. I don't really know. Seven. Bournemouth didn't do anything. They just sat back. They got so many players behind the ball. And it worked in the end. But you see here, training up. And Nunes, again, he trains so well. He had multiple attributes got for him each time he trains. 
and I'm going to just, just keep training him until that stops, until we train him and nothing's really going up. But you see, we've got a squad report in this one, and looking at the squad report always makes me think, like, we really still have so much work to do with this team, because we have so many players who are kind of just dead weight. Morgan is going down now, and I looked at that, and I thought he really, we might have to move him on now. His contract is expiring, maybe we'll just let his contract run out. But then we have players who we couldn't move on, like Joa and Hoof. We have a lot of work to do. Vardy, good to see Vardy's actually gone up, grown for the first time in this um, series. He's gone up to a 73 overall. His pace grew by two, which is interesting, which will just make him a little bit more dangerous. And Lloyd Isgrove is another player who is growing well while he's out on loan. So my decision to loan him out might may actually turn out to be a good one because he was getting games. I just thought he'd get more growth out on loan, which he's gone up by three already, which I'm happy with that. And then the Premier League table, after these three nil-nil draws in this episode, leave us in, leave us in fourth place. So that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be coming back with some more. Hopefully getting into your transfer window soon because I have some ideas of players that I'm looking for. Bye.